glory, Lord, as we worship you. You are powerful. You are worthy, O oh Lord. You are excellent. You are worthy, O oh Lord. That is the hearts of kings and of men is in your hands. <laughs> you don't need too many people to stop all this carnage in this affairs. And so all the ring leaders, wherever they are, we ask, O oh Lord God, that you pick them. From every corner, the north to the south to the east to the west, so whoever, Lord, is saying that let there be no peace in Nigeria, Father, visit them, arrest them. First of all, that they may know you and the power of your resurrection. Because it's not your will that any should perish, but that all should come to a saving grace, a saving knowledge of you. And so we ask that when they are eating, let them see you. When they are sleeping, let them see you. Wherever they are, whatever they do, let them begin to see. Your goodness, your handwork, your mercy. Let them begin to see you, Jehovah, at work. Let them see and know that, yes, of a truth, there is a God that ruleth and reigneth in the affairs of men. Let those that plot wickedness cease. Let all blood sucking. <laughs> I'm choosing my words. They are not demons, but whosoever the devil wants to use to cause carnage. Because we are praying for human beings now. Father, arrest their hearts. The devil will not use them in the name of Jesus. The devil will not enter the hearts of men and cause brothers to kill brothers, sisters to kill sisters, wives. No. In ethnic reason, that's what they do. No. We don't want that. Nigeria is a melting point. And so we say that that pot will not be overturned. We reject it in the name of Jesus. And we declare and decree that Nigeria as a whole, what we see in other states, we will stop it. It was so sad. Sad. I grew up in Joss. But as we speak, our family house in Joss is no more. It's no more. And that area now has been segregated. And all over there are places like that. But we are saying for Nigeria, it must not, and it ceases to be so. And that's okay. This is quarters for our half-brothers. This is quarters for ourselves. And you dare not enter when we say quarters, we are not talking about somebody's house. So a whole area. A village, call it like a village. So you can't enter. This one is, is our brother. This one. No. No. But growing up, it was not so. We were one. One. When they are doing ceremony, we are doing ceremony. We, in fact, children, our children grow in each other's houses. One of my cousins, Ella, was at a point, he refused to even come home at all, at all, at all, self. <laughs> at all. After a while, my mother said, no. No. Called my eldest sister, please come and carry him. Who doesn't come home again. And his mom is late. So let it not be that he was not taking care of. Please come. Those who are taking care of him, not that I don't take care of him. To show you how we were relating as one. Then now they say, you can't go there. You can't go there. I told you, the first time I, I, I got married, maybe three months, I needed to do some banking transactions. And then it's not like this. When you have a fixed deposit, you need to go and physically. When I got there, my half brothers, because we lived as one, what my family said to me was what they said to me. Where I landed, ah, yeah, well, yeah, yeah. When are you going back? Why did you come? When are you going? <laughs> I said, <laughs> I don't look at them. I said, well, anyway, you people are not my family now, so you can't be asking me that question. This because they are my family, they are asking me what a good mother. She will ask the daughter 
a good father, a good brother. You just married him. What did you come to do? Why did you come? Where? What happened? That concern. What happened? Why? <laughs> I got to him. I said, I bet. I don't even say, I bet. That's when they welcome people. The day I got married, they were crying. Everybody was crying because I was most beloved of God. So they asked me that question. My half brothers, neighbors, our house was a bit. Everybody, what did you come to do? Why? As a family, as a family, I got home. The same question was waiting for me. What did you come to do? Why did you come? When are you going back? I said, ah. I said, I asked me, now ask me. But it's the same family question. They said, no, no problem. I just came to do some banking transactions. Okay, okay, okay. When are you going back? And if parents can be asking their children these questions, there will be no divorce. All these divorce, 50%. It's because you parents, most of you, you have room. You tell your daughter she's married, say, your room is waiting for you. Which room? Which room? I've asked my family, I said, why, why are you asking me this? When I was married, all of you are crying. Say, we cry. We don't cry, finish. You don't marry, go. <laughs> That's why I say, go stay in your husband's house. Stay in your husband's house. I didn't have issue. Remember, I went to do some banking transaction. You know, these three months fixed depositing. I said, ah, that taught me a big lesson. I said, so even if I get a problem, I miss, I know go where to go. If your children know that there's no where to go there, my family will tell you, they say, stay there. We'll solve the issue. They will send a delegate for you. How Power, powerful delegate will show those people. Say, we say, make she stay there. No, we say she no get family. High power delegate will come. Why they put that family even see that delegate said, then go weak. May when it's you need, they would package food, package everything for you. You that go and carry your, okay, we don't turn another one for you. You that go and carry your your daughter or your son says, not good enough. You say, come, he's suffering you. Why don't you send the food to the house? Send food to the house. He's not feeding your daughter. Send food, send everything to the house. Let her stay in her husband's house and take care of her. There. Pay the rent there. Not to say, come back, come back, come back. That's why I have 50% divorce in the body of Christ, not outside. And so, Father, we thank you. We we'll bless your holy name. We give you a praise. All we are saying is we have nowhere to go. And that our nation must, it cannot be 100%, but we can live together. Like I've just said, as true families, as friends, as brothers, as sisters, that is how it ought to be. Not this ethnic cleansing of a thing is barbaric, outmodeled. No nation goes far like that. No nation goes anywhere like that. When they are talking about, see China that we're third world country with. Lee Kuan Yew of Singapore transformed their nation. They are talking of ethnic. No. And so, Father, we pray for our leaders that you rule through them. Wisdom of words of thoughts you give to them. You give to us all in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. Father, we bless you. Touch their heart to do that which is right. Touch their heart to do that which is proper. From all the illustrations I gave, all those families were doing that which is proper. Where are you going? What happened? How are you? The same way our nation, our leaders should look at it. What happened? How can we avert this war? What can we do? How can we do it? Bombarding will not solve the answer. War will not solve the answer. No. No. Go to the YouTube channel there, Banner of Love. We did one on Syria. Syria today is battered and scattered. Assad of Syria. When the uprising started, as I said, no, his nation, his family have been ruling for 90 something years. It cannot be said that during his time, they ceased to rule. No, and then now, what are you ruling over? Rubbles came and bombarded everything. No, he said, no. There are better ways to do things in the mighty name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Daddy will bless 